Who's out there? Who's listening? Who wants to know more about the world that wakes up when the rest of our city goes to sleep? I know I do. And who am I? I'm your Archangel, and I'm broadcasting directly from the shadows to your ears because, Truth Seeker, you are unsatisfied with the simple story, and you want to get to the deep truth. I'm here for you. I have what you need. Let's get started. Everyone is still adjusting to the ceasefire or so-called truce recently negotiated between the Ivory Tower and the Free Barons of Los Angeles. What does it mean when the hot war for the city grows cold? And who was speaking for the Anarchs? None other than the Valley Baron and Music Mogul, who always seems to be at the center of these things. I've heard the Cami Sheriff paid him a visit soon after, but nobody seems to know exactly what that shadow dancer wanted at Club Maharani. I know more than a few who would give a pint of blood to have been a fly on the wall of that meeting, or to know why notable Duskborn have been seen migrating to the valley. Far be it from me to make assumptions, but I'll give you more. Next, rumors of whispers in the Rose Garden. Did a beauty from the royal court and one from the valley tryhards meet to discuss next steps? My sources say it went down, but others claim the two have not been seen together. How then could they be conversing? Then there's the matter of Griffin Park and the strange... Stick with me, I've got more to tell as long as you're with me. Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. What you are watching are the season three epilogues. Our epilogues are short vignettes that focus on specific characters and stories. Some questions that were asked during our season will be answered, but new questions will also be asked. Our epilogue sponsor is Backblaze. Whether you are kindred or kind, you can rely on Backblaze to keep your personal or professional data safe and secure, ready to be restored at a moment's notice should the Second Inquisition raid your haven. Please show them some love by visiting backblaze.com slash L.A. by night. Tonight's epilogue is titled Shattered Faith. Now this is the world of darkness and it is the nature of the vampire's curse that each crime they may visit upon the world has the potential to erode their souls. And yet, the vampire must live off the blood of humans. And the longer they exist, the longer and more distant they become from their human selves, an alien to the world around them. Their actions can have terrible consequences, not only for themselves, but for those they care about. This is the very essence of the curse. And it means that even the best vampire is in immortal peril every night. With that firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. Thank you. 
tonight, we are at Griffith Observatory in Griffith Park. The hour is late, the sky is clear. Two vampires look out over the cityscape, spread far below them like a net of jewels shining on a dark sea. Behind them, the rugged hills of the park rise, nearly wild and desolate in the night. The observatory is closed at this hour, and there is no one here but them. see why you choose to live near here. Mm. The city does look very different from up here. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Much different from my perspective. <laughs> yes. to uh, so much happened um, and we were with the others I we didn't get to talk more about what you told me yeah it was uh, I didn't know how to tell you and I'm pretty sure I picked the worst way. But it just kind of came out. Well, I very much would have appreciated if you hadn't lied to me. I, I, yeah. So, what is the, what is the thought process there behind, how do you justify what it is that you're doing? Uh, I guess I'll explain the series of events that led me there. Um... I, as, I'm, as I said, believe I told you before, I didn't really have anyone show me how to be a kindred. I was just kind of left on my own. And uh, when I did finally feed, fed on what turned out to be a kindred for the first time. And it was amazing. It was so much. It was so powerful. It was... And I didn't know what was happening to me at the time. I had no idea what I was. One. Whereas I have no issue with you feeding on kindred, it's the mortals that you are killing. I know. I... I didn't... When I found out what I was... What it was... That I had fed on. What I was doing. It... When it was finally explained to me what I was and what I was supposed to be feeding on. 
how things were supposed to work. What I had initially been doing seemed more humane. I fed on the things that fed on others. I didn't kill people. I, yes. I fed on the things that killed people. But then that came with its own set of problems. That came with feeding on things that didn't die, that didn't forget, that knew what I was doing. That became dangerous. And if um, kindred, other kindred, if they go missing, it does tend to raise red flags with anybody they knew. <sighs> so, by process of elimination, if I wanted to continue feeding the way I was feeding and I wanted to have the least amount of danger personally as possible, I resolved that I needed to find people who deserve to not be in the world anymore and do it that way. And how did you determine that? How did you judge that to be their fate? I waited to find people who hurt others, who... Who kill others? Or other things, yeah. So then what makes me different from those people? That's a very good question. I do don't... You, what? Do you believe in forgiveness? Do you think people can change? Do you think you can repent for your sins? Because you determined for every single one of those that you changed, that they could not. You made that decision for them. I did. I can change what I am. We can't change what we are. I understand it's slightly different, but people who repeatedly commit egregious crimes or who take other people away from their families, who, who rob mothers of their sons or husbands of their wives. Even if they change, it doesn't stop what they did. No, it doesn't. And who should judge you? It's movement of the mind. Success in the rouse check. Your beast stays quiet. I like to hold him in place. An invisible hand of force immobilizes you. If you wish to try to move, we can attempt that. No, I don't fight it. Um. It's a strange sensation to be paralyzed by something that you cannot see. Who's supposed to judge you, punish you? Am I supposed to do that? <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like them. I want to help you. Um. I... Um, I want your help. Good. I don't... I don't want to 
people anymore if there's a better way. Thank you. Um, sorry. No, it's fine. I deserved it. So, um, I know it's a lot less important, but Psychedelics? Um, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I don't have an issue with that. I'm just curious. Uh, before I was embraced, uh, I was already doing it, and uh, now when I feel like I'm Losing touch with who I was, it helps, it helps me feel a little bit closer to human. Makes me remember what I used to care about and yearn for and I don't want to lose that. And I am getting scared that, that I am. <laughs> that you're drifting farther away. Yeah. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do now that Strauss is in the city. I, I, <sighs> Honestly, I don't know either. I was... <laughs> I was on the right track. I was, I was moving towards the light, towards humanity, and, and I just, I can't concentrate when he's, when he's here, I, he's just, he's a monster, and. Yeah, I've seen evidence of that. I want to do terrible things to him. I don't know what that makes me. Unfortunately, that makes you a little more like me. And there's... I was... As you said, before you returned, you did those things. You were a little like you are now. I was... Also a little like I am now, as a human. Yeah. I did things that were not good. I made mistakes. I was an impatient and rash and childish man. And then I took someone away. Now we just continue doing what we did before. It seems like all of us carry a little piece of that with us into the unlife. <laughs> yeah. I didn't drink vampire blood though when I was a human. <laughs> just in case you were curious. Um. You know, I, I, I don't think Strauss is going to stop <laughs> coming after me and everything I care for. Hmm, neither do I, and I assume by proxy that means me as well. It does right now. I. Right now. But 
I don't know what this is exactly <laughs> between us, but uh, I, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't, if you don't, if you don't want to do this anymore, I would clearly understand because I, I don't want anything to happen to you. Look, um... I think that was... If I'm not being... Forgetful. <laughs> I think you just learned the worst thing that I had. That was the worst secret that I had floating around in my head. And I don't, I don't want to not do this. You're very important to me. much trouble, if not more than anything you've brought me. Well, a lot of it's theoretical trouble. It hasn't happened yet. <sighs> but... Uh, I... There is a problem we can work on in a productive manner other than just complete fear of another person. Oh, yeah. How do we fix the mirror? I'm sorry I told you to break it. I mean, I didn't have a plan, so yours was as good as any. It's not like I've been seething about it for days. I just, anything. I just, I fear if you had access to it, I'd no, oh, I, I get it. But he... Uh, he mentioned that he... had what he came for. I, I have a theory. I don't know. We weren't able to go back into the room, so... I think... they took the man that was in there. I have no idea who that man is. The Nosferatu? Yeah. Um. I think that's who they took. But I won't know until I get back down there. But I can't get back down there until either we find a new way down or fix that mirror, which I don't think duct tape's gonna fix a mirror like that. Well, we'll look for a new way. Okay, I, I don't know. That's fine. Maybe there are ways to fix it, I... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Could ask the weird sisters, I, I, I mean, they... Esther seemed to know stuff I didn't even know was possible, so... I don't... That's every day for me. like to put them in danger, but I... I'm very confused. If Hester was familiar with Strauss, I, I, I don't, I don't, okay. I don't like that. Do you think she was familiar with him by reputation, 
or that she actually knew him. I was a little distracted, I can't. I I wasn't really picking on subtle nuances. I don't know. I don't I don't know how she contacted him, how she Yeah. I don't know how that thing works. So I'm hesitant to ask her, but because I'm unsure right now. I, I don't I don't I don't know who to trust. Maybe the way that they got out whatever magic she was using, maybe that could be a way that we could get mm, back into the... Jump there, as it were. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... Yeah, that's possible. I don't know if we have to know the end destination or be line of s- be able to see it or something. I don't... Um... And I don't know if it's smart to ask her or not, because if she's... If she is working with Strauss. Yeah. I had a thought, though. It doesn't really go along with our Cold War scenario that we decided to invent. Well, I didn't agree to that. But if we continued down the path we were going, we would have died. All of us. But I had an idea the other day. Night. Guess it's still applicable. When I was still in New York. And mortal. (laughs) I studied architecture. That's when I was in college. And I had a thought that if we could use those ley lines and we could very precisely hit weak points in a building, I know where I can hit it so that it would all fall on top of itself. It's all theory. But if we want to make Strauss go away in an accident, theoretically, I have a way. Yes. Uh, that would be... I mean, it's not a for sure. I, I mean... It wouldn't get rid of him, mm, per se. Probably not. But we could make it very difficult to stay. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. I don't know. I don't know if we could even do it. I don't know. I haven't tried to really use them yet. I'm sure we could. I I mean... What little we were able to do was incredibly powerful. Yeah, that's not disconcerting or anything, seeing as they don't know how I'm still a little confused to how they knew they were there. I I know there's magic suffusing the park, and I know it's been a beacon, and I know they knew there was magic there. But how do they know specifically where to go and how to get in there? Because I've spent years there, and besides one confusing werewolf, there has been no one down there. Strauss is very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. He He might know some sort of magic. I don't know. Mm. That's the thing with Blood Sorcery, you know. (laughs) There are almost no limits. Yeah, I'm learning that. (sighs) I'm, uh, I'm sorry that you got dragged into all this. <laughs> if we hadn't come to you on the uh, on that first night, and then I hadn't come later and asked you about Annabelle, I think you could have stayed out of all this. I, 
I don't... I don't think that that's true at all. Strauss would have never let me peacefully live here. Uh, no, it's not. It's not your fault. If anything, all that it's done is put you on danger. And no. That's normal. Victor puts me in danger all the time. It's fine. <laughs> no way. If I mean, to be fair, I put myself in danger more than Victor does, but he does it. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you came. I'm very thankful for that. I remember when I first saw you, you were... <laughs> what was I doing? Well, clearly so self-aware and... But you're always looking out for others. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Annabelle was confusing at that point in time. She's still confusing, but it was a different kind of confusing at that point in time. I don't know if you know this, but I'm very into puzzles. Mm. And she was a puzzle. Yes. Yes. Your conversation is interrupted by the sound of soft footfalls. Someone is walking towards you on the marble floor that circles the observatory. so many restless days wondering what I would say when I finally found you. And now that I'm here, I don't know what to say, but I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Well, no, it's, it's, it's stress. Blame. It's, it's me. It's me. It's me. Katya, as soon as your hands brush against the cloth of Eva's dress, you burn. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. I'm sorry. Take an aggravated wound, which I will mark off. Stras, he told me what he did to you. He told me that he drained all of the color from you. He was a fool then. Because your beauty surpasses any curse that anyone could ever put on. same question. You kind of came out of nowhere. Who are you? I am sure that Evangeline has told you about me. I don't think so. I am Katya. I don't, I, you are Katya. And Evangeline belongs to me. Belongs to you? Wow. Why... <sighs> And your name is Evangeline. I mean, I know you said Eva was a nickname, so I guess that's fine. That's I for mean, later. Who are you to her? Who is, what is this? I, I thought you were gone. I thought he took you away from me. I thought you were gone, and then he told me that you were still here and I tried to find you as soon as I could. 
I say that she belongs to me because she does. This Katya is my sire. Oh. Good. Good, 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 good. And who are you, little boy? <laughs> Jasper, Jasper Hartwood. It's lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <gasps> Would you mind giving us a moment? Sure. <sighs> Jasper? Yeah? How far away do you go? I go about ten feet away. Within an eyeline, but I... I'm not listening. I am so sorry. I tried to find you as soon as I could. Oh. Ah. What, what happened? Where have you been? What have you been... I... I've been working on some projects for Strauss and I, what? After for the Tamir. What he did to you? I I mean, I remember just as well as you do how terrible that was, but I created you without permission. It was my fault. Oh, and as terrible as it was, I I deserved it, and I learned from it, and I'm moving on, and now I've found you. You did not deserve it. Those rules were insane and ridiculous. The rules are not insane. And they're not really ridiculous. They're what protect us. They protect me, they protect you, and I'm worried about you. I've heard about this messy coterie you've been running around with. The, I, I, I live on my own. I'm not. I'm not messing around with them. They're not. They're not my coterie. I, I'm alone. What about that walking, talking, festering sore, Jasper? You don't seem too alone. And I expected you to move on, but I did not. <laughs> it's no bother. What, what do you want? Did, did Strauss send you here? Strauss told me you were here. I was already on my way into town because I'm going to be doing business here for a while. <laughs> and I'm working on something that I think you will find quite interesting. And I, more than anything, would love to see you and be with you. Even just sometimes. I understand if you don't want to be with me, but you are my responsibility. And whatever you do, Strauss will come at me for. And you remember what happened the last time he came at me. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how you could be working for it. We used to, we used to talk about how ridiculous it all was, what happened, I... I'm trying to survive. And I want you to survive. I am surviving. I, I... 
you're not going to if you keep running around town with the undisputed baron of bullshit. I'm not running around town with them. I, I, I have my own, I have my own path. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't understand. You've changed. I might have changed, but what hasn't changed is how I feel about you. I assure you. And I want what's best for you. What about what I want? I want you to have what you want, too. And what do you want, Evangeline? To be free, like I always have. I I can't return to that, I can't. Well, I promise I will do everything in my power to help you be free. I will put everything that's important to me, everything I believe in, in jeopardy to help you. But I do not like the way that that boy talks to you. I... Do I see them looking over at me? Yes. I'm going to head back over. Very well. Um, Katya, was it? Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation, but it is very obvious you were speaking about me, and it is rather rude to talk about somebody like they're not here. So, what is the issue you have with me? I was just asking Evangeline how she's been. Mm. I told her I was happy that she found somebody a friend. (laughs) I'm sure. Someone who protects her and takes care of her. You protect her, don't you? You keep her out of danger? I... can tell by her body language that you are not speaking the truth. I don't. Mm. I was trying to like you. (laughs) It's not going well. Well, we just met. We did, and I don't like being lied to. Look. I understand your relationship is complicated, but I don't know the specifics, having never known my sire. So... I'm trying to let this run unimpeded, but if you could try not to insult me, that would make things run smoother. I will try very, 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 very hard. I'm sure it'll be difficult. Mm. (sighs) I don't move away again, but I turn around. Very well. What do you, um, what, what, what do you want, Katya? T- t- is there something that... I once again found myself apologizing. I am really emotional and I... Maybe tonight wasn't, wasn't the night for us. However, I just want a chance. Please just spend time with me while I'm here. Let me show you things. I do need to meet this um, Victor Temple (laughs) person while I'm here. I am going to be conducting business and I would just like to make his acquaintance. What side do you stand on? What side do I stand on? Out of professional curiosity. 
Are you with the ivory tower or are you not? Well, I'm probably on the opposite of whatever side you are on. Mm, fair. We seem to be very different. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. He'll talk to you either way. I was just curious. There are rules and traditions. Are there? I'm sorry. Um, I don't know them. So if they exist, I'm sure they're great. But, um, they seem to be doing all right, so I'm going to keep doing that. He is adorable. Mm, am I? I'm really starting to like him. <sighs> We can meet again. have the little crystal ball that you gave me that night in Woodstock. <laughs> Do you still have the ring I gave you? Things. Things are just things. Just, you're not here to come after anyone. I'm here to work. What are you, uh, what are you going to be doing? <sighs> well, it's a business. Um, it's a business that I'm running with Strauss and the Tremere. We've been setting up different shops in certain cities all over the world. I would have to... I'm sorry, I would, I, would, I would have to make sure that I can tell you the rest, but if you spend time with me alone, um, I have a lot. I have so much to tell you. I, um, look, I can't, I can't promise anything f for me. I the same, but I, I do want to hear what you've been doing and where you've been and... Yeah. It's been really hard without you. Very nice talking to you. I'm sure the pleasure is all mine, Katya. <laughs> um, ja... You're very close. It's Jasper. Jasper. Yes. It's a cute name. Mm, thanks. I really go towards cute. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you like him. Smells though. Well, I will give you the phone number 
that I'm keeping. I'll call on you. <sighs> Please do. feelings. Would I be correct in assuming that uh, you are in fact the Moibagrovi Livestock that was written inside of the ring? Yes. That's fair. That's okay. I mean, you told me it was from somebody else. I didn't I... think it was your sire. She's awful. She's... She's... fighting darkness just like we all are. Yeah. She's only been kind to me. It seems like she's fighting it the usual way. <sighs> By failing. <sighs> hey. It's alright. <laughs> no. No. It's not. wasn't any worse than others. So, I'll check that off as a plus. I don't know. She and Strauss are much older than us. Mm, Yeah, I'm sure. Everybody's older than me. I don't know. I don't know how. I just can't. I just don't know. I don't see how we survived this. I don't want to go back there. Hey, um, I don't either, so at least we're on the same page. So it's, it'll either be okay or it won't. And, um, we'll eventually find out. Rapid footsteps approach. A bright light shines at you. Hey, you kids, you're not supposed to be up here. A uh, security guard approached. He wears the uniform of the park police. He's holding a flashlight, shining it at you. I'll see you in a little bit. Is there a column, one of those columns that are at the observatory I can step behind? On the side of the observatory building that you're on, yes. I put one between me and the security guard, and I activate Unseen Passage. Unseen Passage. Rouse check. I don't get hungry or I'm good. Mm -hmm. You are still within earshot, however. Yeah, so I stay. Hey, what are you doing up here? And Uh, and where's... I could have sworn there was... No, it's it's just me. You're not supposed to be up here. Sorry, uh, I'll leave now. Are you okay? I'm fine. You're like all Renfair or something. Yeah, I was there today. Look, um, it's cool. You just come up here to be alone and think? Yes. I get it. I get it. People do that. You're, um, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a few minutes. Thank you. I'll be back in, um, 
say half an hour. Don't be here. Okay. Okay. Good night, miss. Good night. He continues on the length of the walkway and soon disappears around the corner of the building. Is the big bad man gone? <laughs> and one one time, I would like to have a night where nothing happens. <laughs> Just once. Again, my previous suggestion of not doing any of this would uh, probably help that. Fair. That's fair. I don't see that in our foreseeable future right now. Nope. I don't know, isn't there a... part of you that just wants to leave? All the time. Sometimes I wonder if I could... fly high enough... and just become one of those stars. Just leave everything. You could come with me. Uh, thanks. I don't think my color really works for stars. Sure it does. You have a light as well. <laughs> hey. I can see it. I guess that makes you special then. <laughs> mm, I'm curious. Did you used to wear a lot of red? <laughs> Lots of colors. Uh-huh. But yeah. something to imagine. I'm going to have to talk to her. That's fine. I don't. I worry what she would do if I didn't. I mean, you do, I don't control you. It's probably a bad idea to ignore her. But I can be nearby if you need backup. Yeah. You just let me know. Maybe I can find out what they're up to. You know? curse of the kindred means that every night is a balancing act upon a knife's point stray too far to either side and you fall but staying in place means you get cut so such an existence, love may be the only hope one could possibly have for redemption. Is love possible among the damned? And this is where we end our epilogue and our vampire story for now.